out delete that and bring that player viewport back in here move everything back inside so we've now even though this parent viewport has children uh, the viewport itself is governed by a scene and so that allows us to edit both viewports independent or well not independent what's dependently right so like if we make any changes to this viewport we don't have to uh, worry about duplicating those changes across both instances so we're doing a little bit of anti aliasing i'm not sure if that's really making a big difference uh, Might as well just disable it for now. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we should be able to have a script on the viewport. And I'm wondering if we actually create a directory for this. So we'll say player viewport. We'll save the script and we'll just drag these files into the player viewport cool all right so what i want to be able to do is just to respond to input events on this on our viewport now if you don't know what the viewport is is in the split screen in that sort of split screen uh layout the viewport is essentially the screen of each player, right? Each player sort of has their own screen, and that's a viewport. And so what I want it to do is allow each player to drag onto their own screen and, and affect their shooting, right? So here we're going to print, and you're going to say uh, end and start and what we need to do is we need to put this in a uh, input handler so an input handler looks a bit like this and then we just need to indent it correctly all right so what I hope to happen here is that when I click and drag on one of the players screens we should get a start and an end I believe Uh, ah, okay, so it looks like we have uh, disassociated that node by moving uh, folders. So let's just do that again. If I delete this viewport, bring it in here. And then move everything back under it and I think we're going to have to rename that viewport because our previous code was calling it viewport and I don't want to mess anything up okay so let's delete that viewport and drag this one in drag the child cool okay so now let's give this a go and I hope to be able to drag on the screen and get some events. So if we can do that, oops, something happened. Uh, Right. So we've got our breakpoint here, and if I open up this event, we can see it's an input event mouse motion. 
And it's really interesting that we get tilt and pressure. And we get a device. Okay. So if I just print the event dot pressure here, I wonder if this will allow us to figure out that like Okay. Input event screen touch. Alright. So if if the event is an input event screen touch. Then let's print screen touch. And if the event is an input uh, event screen drag. We'll say screen drag, and what else do we have? Uh, screen, that's it. So what I believe is going to happen is, <clears throat> and let's maybe just uh, paste this under each branch, so we can see uh, what's starting and when. So what I believe is going to happen is the screen touch is going to start. Then once we start to move a little bit, the screen drag is going to start. And then once we lift, the screen drag is going to end and then the touch is going to end. That's how I uh, logically think this should work. But uh, the developers of Godot might have had a different idea. But I imagine that's how you'd plug into the system. So let's see if that works. Okay, so we got a screen touch. We got two screen touches. Don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. Okay, so screen touch, and we get a drag end. Okay. That's interesting. So our viewport, um, we don't really seem to have the player number. Nothing really has the player number, except the, even the camera doesn't seem to have the player number. <clears throat> That's fine. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to export a integer variable, sorry var, and it's going to be player number, and we're just going to default it to one, right? And that allows us to go back into our game scene and just click on this. So that's going to be player one by default, and that's going to be player Okay, so now our viewports have a number which represents the player that they are viewing. <clears throat> and now let's jump into our um, viewport code again. Okay, so what else uh, do we know, or what else can we um, glean from? The system. Okay, so right now we can say that uh, player touch. So it's always going to be pressed when you do a drag, right? So what we want to do, I guess, uh, is we just don't want to do a breakpoint here when the event fires the first time, and we can do a percent s. And put the uh, player number in there. In fact, yeah, that should be fine. And 
let's just make sure that our player numbers are are getting uh, applied in the correct fashion. So let's just log those values. Okay, so if I drag here, uh, we got a breakpoint. But before the breakpoint, screen touch two. Uh, that's not what I meant. I definitely thought I clicked on screen one, but okay. In the meantime, let's open up this event and we can see that position is negative 242 and 292. All right, so what we want to do is we want to have an internal variable here. So it's just going to be a variable position is equal to null to begin with. Uh, yep. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say that our position is equal to the event position, right? And then what we're going to say here is our uh, event position. So uh, if position position and I assume there will always be an event position. So there is maybe a scenario where we don't have a position. So maybe we say like, if not position, I need to remember to turn the game off. Otherwise the music's going to keep playing. <laughs> okay. So if we don't have a, a position, let's just return that just guards against a, um, a crash. If we make a silly mistake. Um, so we, when you initially touch the screen, we just save whereabouts you touched it. And when you drag on the screen, if we don't have a position saved, oh, here we go. Actually, what we want to do is if event dot is pressed, then we set the position. Otherwise, right, we want to just set the position back to null. Right? And now there is a scenario, I think, where the position is null and we actually get a screen drag event. You never know with these things. So we're just going to say, like, if the position, if we don't have a position, say we don't really care. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to say the difference. Uh, so if we move. Up, so it's the yeah, the difference is the uh, position minus the event position, and let's just print um, dragged, and we can print the difference, right? Okay, so we got a screen touch on both. Okay. So we're getting the drag. Unfortunately, we are, uh, hmm. I think we're registering the uh, events. So we're registering the events. Thanks to Folos. How are you doing today? Check out this effect. This is, this is, this is, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> I got the fo fog working in the end, but it wasn't worth it. It's too slow. And it doesn't really make a big difference. You know what, I kind of feel like making the missiles a little bit more hardy, so they bounce more times. <laughs> 